Welcome back to the Build a Basement. Today we are going to do part two, pseudo part two of our CNC tap uh, installation and testing. Uh, so last time we took it apart, we lubed it up, we cleaned it up, got it all ready to go. Uh, looked pretty damn decent, if I might say so for myself. Uh, so I want to get on the ultimate build here. So it's kind of a continuation of the ultimate build. It's a modification to the build that we were doing. Uh, we're replacing our original tap, which had nothing wrong with it, but this came out, people asking questions about it. So it's going in there. Let's put it in. All right. So if you haven't liked, subscribed, all that stuff, that little notification down there to do that, that would be much appreciated. I've got our, um, our stealth burner and our original tap off of here right now. I have our tap that we're installing here today. Um, it's going to be on there. And I have all the parts that we're going to need to do such things. Our belts are all off. You guys didn't need to see me pulling that off. That's, you know, you guys figure that one out. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, talk a little bit about this. In the actual installation manual, what they want you to do is take off these units right here that hold the belt in place. Uh, and then that's followed by um, basically putting your screws in here, which are pre kind of pre in there a little bit. I think it's really awkward. I've, I've played with it a little bit. I've tried doing the belts a little bit. <clears throat> I don't, you know, I understand it. They're trying to make it easy for everybody or easier for everybody in the sense that they don't want people necessarily to take this apart if they don't have to. Um, I think, you know, to, to lubricate this, you at least need to separate the front from the back to my video. I also think that to properly install this to make it relatively non, um, harmful to your personal feelings of uh, this particular part. You need to take it apart to put it in. Um, before we take it apart to put it together though, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this modification. This is for the X, whoop, for our uh, X switch on our gantry, which is over here on the side, barely out of frame here. But basically this is a printable part. It's on the GitHub for the unit. Uh, this basically goes in like this. It is held in place with provided M2 screws. I believe these are M2 by 10s, uh, but I do have an issue with these. And this is kind of a little modification of their instructions, a little modification of the parts they give you. Um, one is uh, basically that uh, the, these screws are, are pretty dang small. Okay, so I'm putting a washer on them. So washer on them. I had the washer here. Totally understandable if you don't have an M2 washer. I get that. Not everybody does, but something you might want to consider. Uh, two is the back panel here is threaded, but this is very thin. I've actually measured this real quick. It's slightly under two millimeters in thickness. Um, it's actually about 1.9 or so. Um, which means you're only really getting maybe three or so threads on there. So really easy to strip it out. So what I'm suggesting, what I'm doing is I'm getting it on there. I'm also going to put another washer on the back side here. I'm going to try to hold this in frame. Normally I work on the desktop, but we got the printer here right now. So working around that. So let's get that washer. We have a washer on the front. I have a washer on the back. And these things are so small that I keep dropping them. And now I got one that's stuck in my rail. Go ahead and magnetize my driver here. Let's see if I can get that out. Look at that. Trick of the trade. All right, so let's try this again. Go ahead and first of all, let's zoom this out a little bit. Oh, that's in. It's out. I'm gonna push this out a little bit just so I can work with my hands and not feel all scrunched up. Okay, so I'm gonna put this right here, like so. I'm gonna grab an M2 nut. And actually, before I do any of that, now that I finally got that washer where I want it, I'm gonna put a little thread locker on there. You know how I feel about thread locker and plastic and ABS in particular and 
I'm not overly concerned about thread locker and ABS. By all means, if you are, do not do this. I am not, so I am. So I can get some thread locker on that one real quick. I'm gonna put this back on here like so. STL file for, um, this is a M2 by 10, STL file for this modified part uh, to put on here if you're not using an X switch right on the actual tool head is on the uh, Git for the CNC tap. So you can get it there. Haha, uh -huh, pun intended. And I'm gonna take that nut, I'm gonna put that on there. And here's the thing is, like I said, there's only a couple of threads because that plastic's so thin. It's, it's all it needs to be for thickness for actual structural strength. But in terms of actually threading and holding a proper screw, uh, I did read some reports of people stripping things out. So uh, one, the washer on the front kind of helps you know, mitigate that pull through. And two, having a nut on the back basically is almost like double nutting it. We have a thread here or a thread here. So chances of that coming loose are relatively low. Go ahead and put thread locker on as well. Um, but basically people have stripped these out when putting them in, but putting a little nut there on the back is going to guarantee that that does not happen to us. I only have one on there, it's pretty, pretty well on there anyways. Um, so that's a 10, I have a 12 here. You could do this with two 12s. You have uh, additional room in the back if you wanted to. I just happen to have two because this section is thicker than that section. So I decided to go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna get it just so it pokes through a little bit there. I'm gonna put the washer on that. And I'm gonna drop that real quick. And did I catch it? I did catch it, all right. I'm gonna try that again. This would be a lot easier if I was actually just working directly on my bench. But, gotta make a video. <sighs> you know what, we forgot the thread lock on this one, didn't we? Man, I am batting. I'm not even batting. I'm not even swinging. All right, let's get a little thread locker on there. It's not going to destroy my ABS. If you don't believe me, that's fine, but. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and do this. Double nut it again. And then tighten that up. And I'm going to grab that real quick on the back side with these little pliers. Nice and snug. Make sure the other one's nice and snug as well. Good. So there we go. We have <clears throat> we have our our X portion here, uh, our switch hitting portion. Uh, we have our M2 by 10, M2 by 12. Uh, we have washer on the front, which uh, it doesn't normally come with. It just came with the um, the, the screws themselves. And basically they're threaded through this metal, but that metal is really thin, only a couple threads getting through there and they're relatively loose. So they're uh, washered and nutted on the back as well. So that's where we're at. Good, all right, modified, good to go. I'm gonna slide this over here. I'm gonna slide these guys over there. And I'm going to set this aside for a second. So got my LDO rail right here. We got our belts all ready to go. One of the first things I'm going to do before I attempt to mount this, I think this makes it a little bit easier, is I'm going to remove these four small M2 square, uh, screws, squares, the screws. One, and I'm gonna use the uh, magnet right here on my bed to make sure I don't drop these, because if I did, I don't think I'd find them ever again. They're almost the size of big grains of sand. All right, so I'm going to now lift this up and away, like so. I'm gonna set that portion aside, okay? And I have this piece ready to go. Um, 
make note here of the rail. Uh, do not slide it all the way off. Uh, we did move it around a little bit when we lubricated it. Basically, we're gonna slide it down to put our screws in, and then we'll slide it back up um, once we do that. So first things first though, let's see about getting these belts on this a little bit. Um, I'm going to loosen these up as far as I can while still kind of holding them there to put this first side through. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. And I think we'll move the camera up. Pardon the shake here while I do this. Working off this side camera, I don't normally work with this camera much. Try to get you a good view though. I think that's good. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our top belt. It actually is going to go around the back side of this. So going through the back, so I'm gonna completely go through like that. And then it is going to loop around. I'm going to twist this, kind of like a helicopter here. I think I can do that. I'll have to loosen up just a little bit more. Oh, where is the proper screwdriver for that? So this guy? Yeah, that's it. Loosen up just a little bit more, just so we can spin this. I'm pretty sure if this is out all the way, we can do that. If not, we'll have to take the screw completely out. There we go. All right, so I've gone ahead and I spun this around at a 90 degree angle. I'm careful not to lose this rail. I do I have this carriage. I do not want it to come off of the rail. I'm gonna loop that around like that, like so, okay. I'm gonna grab my second one. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to take it, I'm going to pass it through. And I'm gonna hold this again at the 90 degrees and I'm going to loop it and pass it through. These should be about the same amount of teeth on this pass through. So I'm gonna line those up and make sure that they're relatively tight. The pathways are pretty much exact to the six millimeters. So once we get it where we want it, we go ahead and tighten that up real quick. Like that. And then we have those first two on there pretty easy. <clears throat> we're gonna do the same thing with the second ones. Uh, and then we're gonna work on actually getting this mounted down. So again, I'm gonna loosen up the screw about as much as I can without it falling off. I'm going to pass these ones through on the back side. There's the first one. And I've gone ahead and I've loosened up these belts all the way from the idlers on the front, just so you know. Strongly suggested. It's gonna buy you uh, a few extra millimeters or so, probably uh, five or, yeah, I guess probably maybe about five millimeters to be able to work with. Um, so I'm gonna just barely get, you know what, I'm just gonna pass these two through like so. I get this rail right about where it's going to wind up. Okay. And just so I can use my fingers to do what they need to do, I'm going to get these screws ready, which means I'm going to put a little bit of thread locker on them. the rail and just going to very barely go finger tight not even enough to really hold it but basically just hold it I know that doesn't make sense but trust me <laughs> all right so there's one and let's get number two just so we have it semi-secure And just just like that okay so now we have our belt we're going to pass this through as far as we can again we don't want to drop that carriage off of this rail we want to be careful of that and I'm going to grab that once I get up and over where the carriage is going to be I'm going to let the carriage come back up like so and I'm gonna pull this sideways. I'll lay that one over like that. So basically I pulled this one, laid it over. And I know my hands are in the way here, I apologize for that. I 
go to a top-down view, but I don't think that's going to show you much of anything. So doing the best I can here with camera views working in close here. Um, but you'll see the, the progress. You may not see the actual movements, but you'll see the progress. And hopefully that will be enough to help you out if you're having trouble. So there's that one. It wants to slip back every time I pull it just a little bit. All right, there we go. Pull it like that. I'm going to hold it one finger while I do the other. And then I'm going to twist the retainer back around. It looks like I lost a little bit of this bottom one when I did that. So what I'm going to do here is try again. Drop this down. This would be a lot easier to do if you're doing this uh, from install, from primary first install, as opposed to trying to just after you've already trimmed your belts back. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you see me kind of you know, kind of flabbering around here and you're like, man, I don't want to go through that. It very well is not this difficult. I can guarantee it won't be this difficult if your belts are um, are still cut, not trimmed yet. Enjoy this issue is just because I have trim, trimmed belts here. And I'm really having struggling here trying to get this bottom one on. Want things in my way. So... I'm going to get that at least started. Just enough to hold it a little bit. And then what I'm going to do in actuality is see if I can just grab this and give it a pull for the remainder that I need. Yep, that worked pretty well. I actually gave it too much. Pull it back right there. They're about equal on both ends, which is what they should be. Belts are relatively loose, but I know I can tension those up. They're not flopping around completely in the breeze. There we go. And keep in mind the majority of the holding force is not actually here, but back here. This is basically just retaining them from being able to lose the force. It's on the 90 degree bend that most of that holding force is taking place. Okay. So, all right, we have that. We have our linear, uh, linear rail with our carriage still on it. And now we're gonna be placing this back on there. Uh, one tip I will say about that. Um, is I'm going to push this rail up a little bit. I mean the carriage, pardon me. I'm going to push the carriage up a little bit. And what that's going to do is with the carriage up, the metal that uh, is attracted to the actual rail that's attracted to the magnet in here is being blocked by the carriage. So it's not going to be direct. So it's not going to flop that magnet around so much. We have a much better chance of getting uh, this on properly uh, without dealing with uh, the magnet kind of flying out on us. So... Let me see if I can do that. And we did it like that. Okay, cool. All right. Of course, I need to go back here. because I'm jumping the gun. So excited about getting those in. We need to tighten down our, uh, our connection here to the rail. So I'm going to finger tighten these two. Just like that. I'm going to get my thread locker out again. A little bit on that one. A little bit on this one. Set that aside so it's not my way. And I'm going to raise this carriage up and out of my way. Finger tight, same here. Finger tight. And 
Let's see. There we go. All right. So now I'm going to come back to the first one. I'm going to give it a good tweak. I'm going to go to the bottom opposite corner. Good tweak. Back to the top, same side. Good tweak. Over to the bottom over there. Last one. Give that one a good tweak. And one last test. Make sure we get nothing else. We got a little bit on that one. And this is to minimize kind of making things pull in a direction or another. Uh, kind of keep it circular in, in the motion that we install it. So again, I'm gonna raise this carriage up kind of out of the way. I'm going to move. There we go. All right. So now we gotta get these small screws in. These already have a little bit of thread locker on them. So these are just gonna go in and the first one there, barely tight. It's going to align that carriage. Again, I'm gonna do a, an X here, cross pattern. Second one. And third. And then finally the fourth. All right, and then you go back and let me start back here. Give it a tweak, give it a tweak, give it a tweak. And last but not least, that one. Now those are small screws. You don't want to over tighten them, um, obviously. Uh, don't don't muscle anything you don't need to. Try to try to realize, you know, some of the stuff is pretty small here. Um, but yeah, so that's working well. It's nice and smooth. I don't have any play in it. There's no play left or right on the X or Y. Uh, no play really at all on that. That's very nice, actually. So now let's bring our clockwork two and our hot end mount back down here. And we could put, um, I'll make a note here. We could put our screws here in advance with the two and, two and a half millimeter spacing on it. Um, you can do that if you want, that's up to you. Personally, what I like to do since they're reachable from here, um, I can put those in from this side and uh, we, can, we can make them relatively snug without too much trouble. Let's see, one, two screws, yes. Make sure I didn't forget anything. We got those two screws there. That's on like that. Yeah, we should be good. So, this first screw, it's gonna go in like so. Oops, that actually wasn't where I wanted to go. One of these two guys. I said one thing, did another, so I apologize for that. It's been a long day. I'm going to reach up through here and basically these are the, the retaining screws for the uh, unit right, there we go just gonna barely get that one in come over to the other side and these are again these are the ones that uh, that you originally installed trying out to hold things together while you mounted everything else together. You recall that. And I'm just going to basically now I'm going to give this a good little squeeze and I'm just going to give them a very small tweak, nothing major. Just so I feel them catching. That's gonna hold stuff in place. So the next screws we're gonna put in are the ones that hold the clockwork to the back side here. Conveniently, there is a hole here for that. I 
It's going to hold clockwork where it needs to go. Get that started. And then we'll get the other one in on the other side. Plenty of room for this. Make sure you don't pinch any wires. We still have our wires in there. We don't want to pinch any of that. So, and then these ones, I'm going to give it a little bit more of a tweak on these ones. Because these are actual fastening parts. There we go. So our clock works on there nice. And now the hard part. Uh, I have this just kind of not really zip tied, but this kind of sitting there with a zip tie on it to hold it in place. And my difficult part here is the fact that I have my 4K camera on here. Um, my 3DO 4K camera. So this wire, this ribbon cable was a little bit odd to get where I wanted it because I refused to mount the control board for this in the predetermined, pre-described location. Um, there's actually a, a board that this camera comes with because the camera's so small that is external from the actual camera itself and they want you to mount it to where the ADXL normally would get mounted, but that, I didn't like that. So I finagled away to get it through this channel up through here and then there, open this up and pass this through. And hopefully I can line things up where I need them. Wish me luck. Something's not exactly right here. What are we looking at? There we go. That's about right. So now we have that where that belongs. Do a top down here real quick. Why not, right? Why not? Uh, top down look. We've got our flappy door open right here. And I want to make sure everything is where it needs to be. There you go. We use our long screws again. These are gonna go on the bottom. So my suggestion for assembly of your stealth burner on to your part is to get these bottom ones threaded. Um, basically threaded into your back plane, your, your, your tap, your CNC tap in this case. Okay, but I don't want to tighten these. And I, I mentioned this in another video, but a lot of people have a crack up here. Uh, and I know, I know there's been modifications, um, but a lot of that crack comes from basically tightening these down and then trying to tighten the top down. And the problem with that is, um, well, Hold on real quick here so I can get this aligned. The problem with that is uh, when you do that, you kind of are forcing stuff possibly out of alignment unless everything is like perfect. And things tend not to be perfect. So, case in point, getting this screw to line up with the bottom of this tap. I can see we're out a little bit. Don't want to force or damage anything here, but my screw hole is not perfectly aligned to that. I can see it. 
we may have to back away a little bit here. So let's go ahead and see if we, let's still doing that. All right. So what's happening here is these bottom screws are just slightly off of where they need to go. Uh, they need to go slightly up, which means that our hot end mount needs to slide up just a tad. What I may have done here, full disclosure, is I may have over tightened slightly the retaining screws at the top of the um, of the uh, hot end holding, the, the hot end mount. And that basically is causing it to push down a little bit. So what we'll do is I will back these out so I can get them out. The roughest thing here is backing off the old, that camera ribbon cable again. Urgh. I'm gonna take one of these screws out. And try to set this someplace like that. Let's to see if I can get an alignment here. And I think it'll be off, which is fine. Yep, it's still off. All right, so I'm gonna loosen up these slightly. And see if that helps us get where we need to be. And I think that did it. Yep. All right. So pull that screw back out again. Eventually. There you go. All right. And Luckily our, our CNC, I mean our uh, 4K camera mount, uh, ribbon cable here did not come out of whack completely this time. So we should be able to reconnect this without too much difficulty. Yep, look at that. And let's give it a second go. Every right, once I get to deep breath and see what's going on on these and you know figure a solution to the problem because I will tell you that there'll always be problems no matter how well you put together your printer once in a while something will crop up it's inevitable i can switch cameras back over to this one there we go and since i got that one screw in we now shouldn't have issues getting the second one just double check over here get my hand so i shouldn't feel it pushing away but it should be pulling it in yep so I'm going to just finger tighten that real quick and then I'm going to drop it back a little bit. Same thing with this one. And then drop it back a little bit. And then I'm going to grab my two top screws and I'm actually going to tighten these ones all the way down. Again, when I say tighten them all the way down, we do not want to crack plastic here. We're basically just looking to All sorts of alignment issues here. These should pretty much just screw themselves in. This one's going in just fine. This is just a plastic to plastic screw, so definitely don't want them over tightened. We get that one. And you know what's happening? I wonder, nah, it couldn't be. 
It's right in the right spot though. How bad is my luck? Is that ribbon cable right there? It's hard to tell. So again, So, let me explain the good thing about my videos. If something's gonna go wrong, it's probably going to happen to me. No matter how much I plan or how much I do, there's always something to go wrong, right? So, I will admit that there are a lot of people that contact me about things that they've had go wrong that I don't know how it happened, but it happens so and yeah i was hitting that ribbon cable luckily i did not try too hard to push through so let's do this again we need to stay out of the path of that it needs to be further in like so And again, this is this is a me problem. Probably not a you problem. Yeah, so uh, it's on the other side here, but the 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 daughter board or maybe the motherboard for that camera, uh, depending how you look at things, uh, is meant to m mount on the outside of the stealth burner. But I didn't like how that looked, so. Here we are. First one in, and we have our alignment. Get the second one in. Don't get a problem with this one. There we go. And just for sense of where we're at, and did it happen again? Pretty sure it did. Oh my God. This is almost getting comical now. This is when the blood pressure goes up. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably gonna be blocking the camera when I do it. Because part of my issue right now is the fact that I can't get in there and see what I'm doing when I'm doing it. Um, it's one of the difficulties about trying to do everything on camera. It raises your blood pressure quite a bit, but at this point, I'm pretty sure you guys know how to put screws into your stealth burner to attach it to everything else. So I'm going to dig in here and basically do what I need to do keep that out of the way and get that where it needs to be First thing I'm going to do this time around, and that makes no sense whatsoever. I don't know why this is being so difficult right now, other than the fact that I'm doing it on video, because this has all been together before.
with the original stealth burn that was on it. So I may come to the point here where I disconnect it from the back end um, because this is getting frustrating here. There we go. Ah, finally. And just to make sure. Yep, okay. Now back to this. Apologize for that. But maybe somebody else will have the same problem, right? And eventually they'll see that it is a solvable problem. So no editing to be had. We're just going to go through it. Do what we do. Line that up. Get this one lined up. This one we have not had an issue with yet, so let's go out on the limb and say this one's gonna go right in, right? Okay. And those are just kind of loose. They're in there, but they're loose. Put this one in. And we get in there pretty tight so we can pull everything together up top here. And then do the same thing on this side. Be tight. Go back to the other side here again. Tighten it down. Tighten. Tighten. Not over tight. We're in plastic there. Plastic to plastic. And here we're going from, which is actually scarier, is when you go from plastic to metal because there's no give on the on the opposite side of this it's it would pull it right through if you give it enough so there we go all right our ribbon cable for our 4k cameras in there i'm going to make sure that it's still working and it is okay i can see it on my uh i can see it right down here luckily kind of happy about that so that's a 4K camera, it's still functional. All right, good. All right, so first things first, let's bring this back over to the front area here and let's take a look at it. I mean, there is no play here other than what you would expect just in a plastic piece. Uh, so I would say near no slop, how about that? NNS, um, the tap motion is very good. Um, probably slightly less up pressure required to get it up. Uh, that might have something to do with the weight plus the, um, the way that it's just, you know, the way the magnets are. I know there are modifications for this to, uh, change that a little bit, but I'm not overly interested in changing it. So, uh, now, you know what I didn't do that I might be regretting right now. So I didn't hook up my wire. So let's see if we can actually get to that or if I can't. So I can see it back there. That's a plus. Now, if I can get to it, that'd be super awesome. All right, so I think we can get to it. I'm mostly looking at my arm at this point, so let's, uh, let's go here. Change that over to that. Not 100% on which way this is supposed to go in. It looks like, it looks like it should be going this way. It's kind of sort of getting its way in there. If I can just get my fingers in there and kind of pull it in. So note to yourself, if you do this, install your cabling first. So I'm gonna go back to here. And this is coming out the backside like that. So I'm gonna loop it down and around. Uh, I do have some excess 
um, cabling here that I don't really need, but let's see if I can kind of tuck it a little bit. I'm already tucking my, um, some of the other stuff here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna bring it up and around this way. I'm gonna plug it into the port here. And I think we'll be able to kind of finagle it in here a little bit. Yeah, like so. And then, oh, that's the wrong driver. There we go. Hold me off on this. Just spacing, I guess. There we go. All right. So tighten that down just slightly. Good. All right. So there's that. All right. Let's twist this thing back around. All right. What are we hitting back here? No. Oh. It's always something. All right, cool. So we have that there. I'm going to, I am going to I'm going to see if we can now do a quick homing here. And I'm gonna have my finger on the emergency stop button just in case. I'm good there. Good there. The belts are really sloppy right now. Okay, we're good there. I'm gonna tighten up these belts a little bit using my Rama tensioner, Rama's tensioners here, my front here. Uh, get those close. And I'm just looking up. I'm not really tuning this right now. I'm just kind of it where it needs to be for us to do some testing. Actually let this one off a little bit. Pull it back over here. It's pretty decent. It's doing it by feel. Pretty good idea from feel. I'm gonna do another homing here. Yep, I mentioned before, I do not have anything on my build surface. Uh, I don't have a, you know, a, I mean, on my bed, I don't have a build surface on this because it's the flattest or it's the most static piece that I can come up with that's on here because obviously uh, a build surface may have little imperfections, but this is, I mean, it's, we're down to the foundation, right? So what I want to do is I want to run a quick calibration here. So what I'm going to do, let's see here. All right, let's, uh, let's run a probe accuracy test of 100 samples just to get it kind of where it needs to go. Uh, let's see, let's switch over to this. And we're gonna run that real quick. And it's going to clunky, 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 clunky. While it's doing that, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the upcoming videos we have. Um, I have a video coming out with my nozzle cleaner, which unlike most, which is usually just a back and forth motion, is kind of a zigzaggy motion. So it's cleaning both on the Y and the X axis for the nozzle. Uh, I think it works much better. Uh, it has a deep cleaning as well as a normal cleaning. So depending on what you're actually printing with, you can choose what you wanna do and put whichever one you want in your start code, or if you're using a slicer that allows you to pick different start code or different modified G code based on the type of filament you're using. Uh, for instance, if you're using PET-G, which is really sticky, uh, especially to itself, you might want to run a deep cycle clean versus a normal cycle clean. So that's coming soon. It's gonna be the next Clipper video for that. Um, 
And then what else are we gonna do? Uh, we're gonna look at star code, end code. We're gonna look at the interface and that pretty much is gonna tie up the clipper uh, videos because uh, at that point we'll have just a basic understanding of everything and kind of enough information so people can kind of either uh, be constructive or deconstructive depending on what they want to do. That's on 100 samples. Let's go back to that. Looks like on our first run, we have a 0 0.001339. Uh, let me look. I do have a spreadsheet over here somewhere. Where is that? Uh, let me see. That's that. Here it is. That's what I want. So let's see. This is with a cold bed and a cold nozzle. Uh, and that was 100 samples. That was a dry run. I'm going to now run it with a 30 sample because that's what I decided to go with because it doesn't take forever to run. We're going to do test one and this is with the CNC tap versus the original Voron. Now test one on the original standard tap I had had a standard deviation of 0 0.001167. Uh, and that was on the first run so that was not so great. Uh, on this one, I have a 0 0.00589, which is pretty decent. Uh, and again, we're splitting hairs of hairs at this point, but uh, let's go ahead and I'm gonna paste that in and we're going to do that. And then I also want my maximum, which is a negative 0 0.0038750. And we're gonna run through five series of this with a cold bed and a cold nozzle. Uh, then we're going to heat the bed up to 70 and the nozzle up to 150 and run the same test again. And then in the end, I'm going to bring my spreadsheet over. I'm going to show you what I came up with and we're going to see how this CNC tap does comparatively to uh, the printed tap. And it um, should be interesting. We'll see if there's actually a benefit here to the CNC unit. And again, um, I've said it before and I haven't said it in this video, but this is the most unscientific test ever. Other than the fact that I'm doing at least five samples, I'm doing 30 samples, we could do way more. We could use different printers. You know, my sample size is really small, but I just want to do it for my own knowledge. And um, maybe it will help you make a decision whether or not you go this route or not. So I'm going to do another sample test again. So this is going to be test two of the five. And again, on the first one, we got 0 0.00589. I will tell you that the average of all five tests on the cold bed with a cold nozzle with the original tap was 0 0.0008142, um, which isn't too shabby. On this one, we got a standard deviation of point, uh, or 0 0.000529, which is again, pretty decent. Uh, it's almost the same as the first. It's, what is that, 10th, 100,000th, yeah, it, it is, minutely minutely different than the first one which means that's repeatable so one of the things i talk about people often about because people are always worry that their information doesn't directly uh, exactly match uh, what they think it should is a lot of times the the matching of a number is not anywhere near as important as whether or not there's repeatability in that um, you could have a number that is off from where you think it should be within reason, of course. Um, but if it's repeatable and it's like that every single time, uh, a lot of times that means more than having the perfect setting. Like in a perfect world, I'd have this zeroed out to the nth degree. Uh, when I do a quad gantry leveling, uh, it would get it on the first run around and it would uh, you know, basically be again to the nil but it's usually never i mean i've hit zero before but it's usually never that it nine times out of ten has to go around at least twice um but that's fine um now if you go around and you get it and you do it a third time uh you get it on the second time do it a third time it should uh it should get it on the first try at that point because it should be all set up on the quad gantry level so uh in terms of repeatability i will tell you right now i'm kind of impressed so this time around we have 0 0.000534. So it's kind of in the middle of the first two. Again, the hairs of hairs are being split right now. And if you're into that type of thing, cool. If not, I apologize. Do bear with me. And let's see our maximum, our minimum. Let's get that. So our maximum every single time thus far has been 
0 0.03875. Our minimum has floated around a little bit, floated, floated in a word, has floated around a little bit. We've gone from 0 0.0395 to 0 0.04 to 0.04125. So now we're going to get our sample four. And I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this one's gonna be right around 0 0.005. Five. Why don't we go with that? 0 0.00055. Call an educated guess. That could be way off. I probably jinxed myself. It's probably gonna be way off this time or way perfect. Uh, and it's, it is off, not horribly off. Cause again, these are small numbers. So this time around we're at 0 0.000672. Um, which isn't too bad, really. Um, it's still well within reason. The original tap basically states that you should be between uh, 0 0.0003 and 0 0.0008 uh, for well-built machine. So if you have a poorly built machine, I guess it's supposed to be more than that, but um, yeah. So this time around, not too shabby. We actually had the same min and max as we had on the on the test three for that one, uh, but the standard deviation was slightly higher at 0 0.00672. Let's run the fifth and final test with a cold bed and a cold nozzle. And I'm not going to say anything this time because it jinxed me last time because that's just how lucky I am. Kind of sounds like a really slow horse galloping. Yeah, uh, so this time we came back, we got to 0 0.000591. So we worked our ways backwards a little bit and let's see values only. And then let's take our min and max or max and min, I should say, copy. And we're gonna paste that in. Actually, while that's happening, let's go ahead and get that extruder up to 150. And let's get that bed up to 70. It's gonna take a little bit of time, so. And let's take our minimum and then copy that. And paste that in. And I'm gonna hit equals average. drag that across here all right and then just temporarily while we're waiting for things to happen here and you can see this sheet if you get into it it doesn't matter to me whatever destroy it whatever by the time you read this i won't want the sheet anymore anyways but so what we have here is our testing thus far while this heats up let's let's look at the data we have thus far we really can't look at this section right here because that's what the heated um, nozzle and bed, so we're, we're gonna not pay attention to that. But for standard deviation, basically on the original tap, I was at 0 0.0008142, which is on the uh, admittedly worser or worse end of where it should have been for a tap, uh, but basically within range. Um, on the CNC tap, I am in smack dab in the middle of the good range for a well-built machine at 0 0.000583. So we're seeing an improvement there. Um, our max, average max devi uh, deviation was 0 0.0545. And here it's 0 0.03875, which was the same on every single test, which is impressive to me because before, as we said, um, repeatability means more sometimes than having the best number. So this number is good, but the fact that this is the same all the way across the board is impressive. We did not have that before. Okay. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't, wasn't exact. Um, over here on our minimum, uh, we have the last th three, four and five were exactly the same. Test two was slightly less test one was slightly less than that which means that it trended at first and then it basically evened out to the same, which is again, very impressive. It's highly repeatable. It's not 100% there, but highly repeatable. 
Um, on my other tap, the first two were the same, and then after that, they the third one was the same as the fifth and the fourth one. So not quite as repeatable, but not horrible in that one either. But overall, uh, it looks like as it looks right now, the CNC tap is functioning slightly better than the printed tap. Can't complain about that, right? So let's see where we are with the printer right now. We'll see our nozzle is heated up to 150. Our bed's getting up to 56. It's nice and toasty. It's kind of chilly down here, so this is kind of nice. Make a hell of a hand warmer. Let's see about, I don't know why that camera's all the way over there. Woo. All right, as this rounds up by 70, let's get ready to run our sample. I'm gonna pull my spreadsheet back over here. And we're literally watching paint dry, sort of. Yeah, all right, so thus far, uh, my impressions of the actual tap is uh, that, or the CNC tap is that it seems pretty well built. Um, I will say that the instructions or uh, provide instructions are a little bit kind of all over the place. Uh, the Discord, the folks that are helping out on Discord are really, I, I can tell that they're really trying to help out, but at the same time, it almost feels like people are attacking them. Uh, and honestly, it's hard to help people that are attacking you. So if I had, if you do buy the CNC tap and you are having an issue, just keep keep in mind, you know, the, the old adage where you can catch more flies with honey than vinegar. Um, and just know that, you know, People tend to want to help people, but if you're not helping yourself and you're not being uh, helpful, you know, in terms of what you're doing, you know, providing good feedback, it makes it difficult for somebody to actually help you out. So um, hopefully that evens out over there. It's a new product. Uh, everybody or most people that build these Vorons, and I hate to say this, but a lot of people are buying additional parts, especially like these CNC parts, because either A, they're having difficulty building or, or printing their parts, or B, uh, they're having issues with their printer and they're buying parts because they're supposedly better than the parts they have. And buying a part doesn't necessarily fix your printer for you. Uh, you do need some knowledge and you do some, do some work there to do it. So we're up to 70 degrees now. So I'm gonna go ahead and start our first probe accuracy test of 30 samples. And funny thing to note, is the clicking, the tapping has a different tone. I don't know if it picks up on the mic the same, but it's uh, it's almost duller. Just just the just the heat of that. I probably shouldn't have been touching that when I did that, but um, so our first standard deviation, not so great on that one. It was at 0 0.003543. We had a maximum of 0 0.0875. And a minimum of 0 0.07125. Okay. Let's run that again. Now, the only thing I'm not testing right now is this in a heated chamber because obviously I don't have all my side panels on here yet because we're still working on things, adding things, manipulating things, taking it slow. Uh, so this one came through at 0 .001037 which again is not too great. I'm not 100% sure why my values are coming out quite a bit worse here with it heated. If you have a hypothesis on that, by all means, do leave a comment. I got a couple of ideas myself, but I don't want to share them quite yet. 
We'll wait and see if this gets better or worse as time goes on. Um, but right now, all of our numbers are a little bit all over the place. So, three. It's our third set of a 70 bed, 150 nozzle, 30 samples of our probe to see what the accuracy is on our CNC tap. And we did get better. We're now at 0 0.000994, which is on the far end of acceptable. Um, I think it's within the wiggle room, I would say, of acceptable. Or acceptable based on the specifications they give us, because quite frankly, all these values are pretty, pretty decent. Um, again, we're splitting hairs of hairs, so. But some people want to get into nitty gritty, so here we are. Um, so our, our minimum and max, our minimum and maximum have changed again. So those are still all over, all over the place, but at least at this point, we've, uh, we've actually tightened up that standard deviation a little bit. Let's see if we keep that pace. We'll do our next 30 samples. Uh, beds holding strong at 70 with the heater fluctuating between 149.5 and 155. Probably do a little better if we did some pin tooting, pin tooting, but um, that one degree I don't think is making too much of a difference. So we actually went back the other way this time. It's not our worst reading. Uh, our worst one was the first one, but this is our second worst one here on the fourth reading. And our minimum is 0 0.0825. So that again is changing and our minimum they say minimum maximum maximum on the first one this one's the minimum minimum is 0 0.076250 so that one seems to have possibly stabilized because it matches the previous one exactly so fifth and final on this <coughs> excuse me i might run one additional one on this i'm not going to record the data because uh, that wouldn't be fair, but I just want to see where it trends. And this time we are better again. We're basically at the at the point where we'd want to be. We're at uh, 0 0.000854, which 854 were the first three digits of my childhood phone number. Funny how you see stuff like that reminds you of things, isn't it? Uh, let's see here, paste special, values only. Uh, that's also very close to the last one on the maximum and on the minimum. Where is that copy? That is slightly changed, but not dramatically. All right, so I'm gonna run a six test on this one. And I kind of feel like this one should be as good, if not better than all the ones that we've tested so far. And my small hypo hypothesis I have right now based on this is that there was some time delay in the actual bed expanding during the heating process. Uh, obviously when you're heating a bed and you're getting the temperature of that, it's actually closer to the heater than the actual bed is, you know, a heat soak. Uh, we didn't actually do a heat soak here. Uh, and yes, we have a better number. So, I know for a fact I didn't do a heat soak on the other one, so the data is a little bit askew, and I admit that. So, but being that all data on the heated bed surface is a little bit askew, and that we heat it to the same temperature at the same speed, in relatively the same temperature room, let's look at what we got. So let's go ahead and let's hit equals average. Yes, that's what we want. And drag that across, boom. So, interesting stuff here. So with the cold bed, and I think the cold bed is more accurate, we are substantially more accurate with the CNC tap than we were with the printed tap. Uh, both of them would work just fine, honestly, but we are more accurate. Uh, with the CNC tap, which basically is right here versus the printed one. 
uh, and that's pretty much across the board here. Uh, so yeah, with the heated one, and again, my data is flawed. Um, I think the accuracy would be pretty close here. I, I'm surprised I didn't pick it up in the beginning, but with our heated bed with the standard uh, tap that we had, we were at 0 0.0051078. And with the CNC tap, we're at 0 0.0015894, which is pretty darn close. Uh, actually, I take that back. We're way better off with the, I was mixing my five and my one. Uh, we're at 0 0.005 and here we're at 0 0.001. So we're still better right here with this than we were with the other tap. Um, I still think it has to do, we're gonna run one more before we get done with this to see where it's at, but I still think it has to do with that bed expanding based on time, because at this point now we do have a soaked bed. And I'm wondering if the difference was just time delay or possibly because that tap was, you know, in the midst of a lot of warm air and you're expect, like I said before, the problem with the with the with the actual printed tap, and I'm not saying there's a problem with it because it works just fine. It's actually amazing how well it works, and it's actually amazing um, the engineering that's in this. But you're you're expecting a lot out of some plastic, uh, especially some some FDM printed plastic that's relatively thin. And I'm wondering if the temperature in that maybe plays a little bit as the heat soaks into that plastic a little bit, and maybe weakens it or you know brings it back to kind of a um, close to the point where it's more malleable, but uh, let's do one more of these and see if it's still good, bad, or indifferent. If if I'm my hypothesis is kind of correct or possibly correct, it should be decent. It should be one of our best runs. And if it isn't, which it isn't, I could be wrong. But again. This is super scientific. So anyways, all right, so here's what I got. We've got to have, we installed the CNC tap. I think it's an awesome product based on the looks of it. Obviously I haven't done any printing with it, but I can tell you it works just fine. It installs a little bit differently than what the instructions might think or have you do. Um, you know, I'm sure you could probably get it on there using the instructions, but I tried to make it a little bit easier for myself to install it the way I did it. Um, would I buy it at the price that's currently at? I think it's probably a no brainer. Um, again, you're, you're gonna reduce this uh, down into something that's much smaller, compact and stronger. Uh, and the fact that it's stronger, I think will make it more precise long-term. I mean, this is a pretty pretty, pretty hard position to be in with the, with the hot end, the stealth burner, uh, and you know the clockwork two all being attached to it onto a piece of plastic that's moving, you know? So, I would buy it again. I think it's worth what it costs. Uh, it seems to work as good, if not better than the original tap. And um, I guess that's it. So if you like this type of content and you want to stick around for some more videos, go ahead and subscribe, hit that bell notification so you get the next video. Um, we're going to be doing another clipper video too. And then we're finally going to start finalizing the assembly of this printer, going into a couple other things and then um, doing some printing with it. It's going to be awesome, right? Uh, I got a big amount of print stuff I got to do for the wife. She's a school teacher. Uh, we print a lot of trinkets and stuff out for the kids for the end of the school year. I'll probably do some short videos of that coming up too. But um, yeah, so hopefully if you are subscribed, you enjoyed it. If you're not, you do. And I will see you next time.